Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, uh, I'm Nick. I record videos on IT and DevOps and technology and tools. And uh, for folks who have been watching, you're probably aware that uh, I touch on FreeBSD stuff uh, every now and again because it's a, it's a topic that's a bit near and dear to my heart. And uh, I think more people should use FreeBSD. Um, I think that Linux is great. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with it, but um, I think that FreeBSD is really good too. Uh, in many ways, I think it's better. And um, I think that a lot of people are sort of turned off by it a little bit because of the fact that it is um, initially when you set it up, text only, and you need to go install a desktop environment. And it's one of those things where it's not particularly difficult, but there is a bit to it. So I thought what I would do is I would try to make the process a little bit easier. Uh, and I put together a utility uh, that basically automates the installation of a desktop environment. Now, there are other tools available uh, that do this. Um, so there's a, a great script uh, by a person named Bruiser uh, on B-R-O-O-Z-E-R, I think it is, on... Um, on GitHub that sets up a Mate um, environment and it's really nice and it's, it's really, really good. The uh, only issue that I have with it is it's uh, obviously very sort of custom for that particular person. And as you guys are watching this, I have a, a screen up where I'm doing uh, an install of FreeBSD uh, 11.4. And <clears throat> actually, while that's running, I'm going to switch over here to 12.2 uh, and another virtual machine and I'm going to go ahead and do a test install here and okay um, and it's a very very simple straightforward install it's all text only which is which is fine it's still very simple to do uh, but I wrote a little utility that sort of automates the process um, similar to that that utility by uh, by Bruiser the difference is that the utility that I made <clears throat> um, sort of is going to act like an extension to the FreeBSD setup. So I wanted to make it as a tool that wasn't just specifically for me. It was a installer, uh, if you will, uh, to basically help people set up uh, a desktop environment. Because there's, there's a, a few things that are a bit tricky to it. And actually, it's one of those things where, you know, if I was doing this just for myself, I would kind of go through all these kind of little afterthought steps that you you would do just if you've been doing this for a really long time. Uh, and <clears throat> I wouldn't really think about it, but actually scripting the process out, it's, it's, there's a surprising number of little gotchas uh, that, you know, aren't, uh, aren't showstoppers. But if somebody was new to this, especially they're coming in from maybe a more Linux background and they weren't necessarily familiar with maybe some of the older ways of, of kind of doing things um, that, uh, FreeBSD still sort of adheres to, which I think is one of the really nice things about it is they, they keep things very simple. Um, and that's great. But if you don't know the simple thing, you know, it can be, it can be a bit confusing. And um, even though the documentation uh, for FreeBSD is, is fantastic, you know, the, um, the handbook is, is one of the best things uh, about BSD generally. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I'm just finishing up this install uh, where I'm going to go add my user. Um, you know, if you don't know what those simple things are, they're not simple or intuitive to you. So um, making people wade through documentation stuff is just not very elegant. Uh, there's also uh, other distributions that are sort of based on FreeBSD. Um, so GhostBSD is one of them. There's uh, FuryBSD, I think it is. There's a, there's a couple more that are already set up pre-graphic um, desktop environments. And for a workstation, I think those are a great way to go. But they don't have the brand name recognition. I think that when it comes to the BSDs, pretty much, um, you know, FreeBSD is, is probably the best known. And then OpenBSD is, is sort of the second uh, most commonly known. So what I thought this would be useful for is a really straightforward and easy way to help people get a desktop environment installed. <clears throat> and 
um, especially if they're kind of like at this point where I am now or even sort of further, this is the end of the installer where you take the system down for a reboot and you'd come back up. Uh, so what I'm going to go do is actually jump over here to uh, my other screen uh, where I have a terminal up just to kind of show this if my mouse will get over there. All right. So I'm over here on just, uh, I'm on my Windows machine. I know people will complain about that. I don't care. Um, <laughs> it's my video uh, and presentation machine. I, it's set up for work. I get the camera here. I'm going to use it. I don't necessarily hate Windows. Uh, I just like Unix better. So uh, I'm in a, um, uh, just a directory. Um, and this is Windows subsystem for Linux. Uh, so I do an ls. There's a script here called install x.sh. Uh, I'm, I have Python installed. I'm going to take a, advantage of a, a neat little uh, aspect of Python. Great little hack. If you, you know, this can be really handy if you're not aware of this. Um, you can do Python 3. Uh, does not work with Python 2. Dash M uh, to load the module HTTP uh, dot server. I think it is. Yeah. And this is going to go ahead and launch a web server running on port 8000. And it's going to go basically just serve up the contents of this directory. So let me make that bigger in case you didn't see how it worked. So Python 3-M HTTP server. Right? So what I can do now is I can actually take the system down for a reboot, but it's kind of more convenient to do it here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit exit. And at the end of the exit, you actually have the option in BSD to drop down to a shell. So if you want to go configure anything else before you come back for the first boot, <clears throat> you can do that. So I'm going to go over here to say yes to drop down to a shell. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the fetch command. Um, and actually, you didn't see me do that because I'm still on the wrong monitor. So let me go back over here. Uh, to monitor two. All right, cool. So now I'm back over here and uh, I've got the, um, I dropped down to the shell. Basically, I just said exit the um, step that I was at the last step of the installer. You'll actually see it again uh, on the version 12 installer. Um, and I, I mentioned this because the script works a little bit differently for um, the 11 series and the 12 series. 12 series, then later, it should be fine. Um, just sort of generally, but I had to make some tweaks for, for 11. So, uh, so yeah, I basically hit exit, ask if you want to drop down to a shell. I said yes, uh, and now I'm going to use the fetch command. So one of the great things about FreeBSD, unlike Linux, is it's an entire Unix distribution, whereas Linux is the kernel, and then you have the GNU utilities. So you, you never really know exactly what's part of the base system, and there usually will be some kind of tool like a wget or a curl or things like that. But with BSD, we know that there's going to be a command called fetch, which does the equivalent of w get or curl so i'm going to say fetch i'm going to use space http colon slash slash 192.168.1.113 um, and then i'm going to go ahead and say colon 8000 uh, and 113 just happens to be my desktop's uh, ip address i'm going to say install x dot sh and what i'm going to do now is probably not what you should do but I wrote the script, so I'm comfortable doing this. I'm going to do dash O to output it. I'm going to do dash, which indicates output to standard out. And I'm just going to go pipe that directly into shell uh, as the root user, right? So, you know, you're a grown up, make your own decisions. And then this is going to go kick off the install script. So first does a, a quick update of the package, uh, you know, systems. It's going to go look at your ETC password, try to go figure out what the most likely user uh, is going to be for you to be using for your, your desktop user. In my case, it found that user uh, ID 1001 was Nick. So I'm going to say, okay. <clears throat> and now we can go ahead and pick uh, the desktop that we want to go install. So I just picked a few of them. I've got KDE, LXDE, LXQT. Uh, LXQT does not have a package for 1104. So that one is only, um, you know, 12 only. Um, GNOME, XFCE, Awesome. All right. So there's a number of these. Uh, I'm going to go pick um, Awesome because it's pretty lightweight. Um, you know, just as an example of one of the, you know, uh, available um, tools. So I'm going to go pick Awesome. Um, it then says, do you want to go install Firewalks, Bash, Vim, uh, a Git client, and sudo? And then there's a number of other utilities that I thought would be useful. 
I'm doing this in a virtual machine. So I'm going to go select the virtual machine additions. There's also like Linux emulation and a couple other utilities that are available that I figured um, with some of the, the desktop environments being fairly minimal, I put window maker in there just cause that's a personal favorite of mine. Um, you know, they may not have some of the expected utilities. You can just run this and then you'll have like a, uh, an environment that if you're coming into this from a, a Linux background, uh, you'll be comfortable with. So, um, hit okay. And that's going to go ask if you would like to go install the drivers for your video card. Um, I'm going to go say no here. Uh, it'll basically ask you what kind of video card you have, and it will try to go install the most common video drivers. Um, if you're somebody who is familiar with FreeBSD uh, and you have some hardware kicking around uh, with different you know, physical machines and GPUs and you would like to um, try to help out, this is one area where I can't really test all of it. So if you want to give this a go and see if it works on your system and then uh, let me know the, the feedback, either, you know, if you've got a patch or a fix or, um, you know, just tell me what doesn't work. Give me a bug report. Um, I'll be, I'll be happy to update it. Uh, it also refers you to the specific section of the FreeBSD handbook that walks you through setting up the um, uh, graphic drivers manually. So, I mean, that's like another one of the things that if you're coming from a Linux background, it may not occur to you that you have to load the, the video you know, drivers because generally they'll work at least with sort of minimum graphical desktop out of the box. So at this point, it's going to go kick off downloading the packages and just doing the install. So while that's running, just because we get some time, I'm going to switch over to my uh, 12.2 system. Let me go move this a little bit over here and close that out. And we'll go create a very secure password. Um, yeah. Basically, this is the same exact install. So um, it's probably not going to be super entertaining, but it's, it's, a, it's a good vamp while the other system is uh, getting set up. So I'm going to say no there. I'm going to say OK. UTC. Um, take the default time. Set up. Uh, I like to set up the local unbound. It's optional. It's a local DNS server. Um, so that might speed things up a little bit. And um, yeah. I don't worry about the time because I'm going to be using, you know, uh, NTP date when the systems start up. And generally for me, I disable send mail because send mail is terrible. Um, and um, syslog D because I don't necessarily want this to be a syslog server. I'm kidding about send mail. It's, it's clunky. It's not my favorite mail server, but um, yeah. Anyway, so I'm going to go add a user. User is going to be called Nick because that's my name. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and as the default login group be Nick. Um, I always set it up so I'm in wheel. I think pretty much everybody who uses FreeBSD probably does the same thing for their normal user. Uh, that's sort of the equivalent to an admin account. Uh, use sh, uh, home directory, blah, blah, blah. and yeah, so pretty simple little utility. It's all just sort of end curses based. Uh, but I like that. I, that's sort of what the um, the FreeBSD installer does anyway. So, you know, it's sort of thematically good to go. And then exit. And then yes to drop down to a shell. And I'll say fetch. HTTP colon slash slash 192.168. 1.113 colon 8000. Dash O. Dash pipe and SH. Oh, use the name of the script. And <clears throat> so this will basically kick off doing our, our initial update. Uh, and then this is going to go launch into our, um, you know, same little setup that we had before. So here I'm going to go pick uh, LXQT because I think LXQT is pretty neat looking. So we'll go ahead and say that. Pick our virtual box uh, additions, hit OK, no for the graphic. Actually, I'll show you what that looks like. Say yes here. And then we've got the, you know, most Intel graphic cards, older Radeon cards, AMD, you know, cards that are fairly recent, NVIDIA, and then other. Um, there's older cards that I didn't add to this because I wanted to keep it fairly simple. Um, and, you know, I can't really test it anyway. So, um, so yeah, so that's basically 
the installer. So I'm going to go ahead and set OK. Um, and it's saying, you know, we didn't specify one or we select other. So it's going to, you know, refer us to the handbook. So at that point, this is doing the the same thing as the the previous uh, previous installer. So it's going to pull the packages down now. Uh, looks like the other one has finished downloading them. So it's on to the installation phase. So, you know, it does take a few minutes. <clears throat> it's not the fastest thing in the world, but it's, you know, not exactly slow either. You know, probably for, for one system, you know, um, it's going to take you 10, 15 minutes to pull all the packages down and install them. So not uh, not too, too bad. Um, with the, the full install of the kind of standard BSD, if you're just kind of running through it and you're familiar with all the options, you're probably looking at like, you know, maybe 30 minutes to a full desktop. And um, and yeah, so the, the idea with this is I think that it's a, it's a nice way to be able to point people to uh, a quick and easy way to get a desktop environment installed because as much as I think FreeBSD is a fantastic server, I think it's people using it on the desktop or um, being able to have it available as a desktop to kind of play around with uh, that lets you get comfortable with it and gets that familiarity that then, you know, lets you uh, end up using this. So, um, and that's the that's the goal, right? I think that there should be more people using uh, BSD. Um, I'm a little bit concerned that, you know, people will uh, really just focus on, on on Linux because it's got so much market share now and that, you know, it'll become kind of the only game in town when it comes to uh, the Unix uh, OSs, especially open source Unix OSs. And, you know, to, to one sense, it's not really that big of a deal uh, because, uh, actually, let me go ahead and unmute the CD for that. Uh, it's not really that big of a deal because it's open source, but I think something I'm going to talk about more in depth in another video is the uh, is the idea that uh, because of the way that the GNU license is set up, companies who have their business tied to Linux are very strongly incentivized uh, to um, influence the direction that the operating system goes. So, you know, Google and Microsoft and IBM and, you know, tons of companies all are invested in, in Linux. And that's great, right? That gives us tons of development. I mean, if you look at how far Linux has come in the last, you know, 10, 15 years, it's, it's insane. Um, you know, the idea that we have like Steam and things like that available is, is, is nuts. But um, you do see it being sort of directed in a way that, um, you know, a, a bit different than historically uh, it, it has been. So looking at the time, it looks like it's been up for 22 minutes. So that's about how long the install takes. Um, so, oh, I got a virtual machine panic. What happened there? That's weird. Huh. All right. Well, we can, good timing anyway. Um, hopefully that's not a virtual box things. I did just recently upgrade my motherboard on the system. So I'm a little bit worried that you know, <laughs> there'll be some weird CPU shenanigans or something like that. Um, but yeah, so the, the idea is that one of the great things about FreeBSD sort of generally is, is it very much sticks to the traditional Unix philosophy of how to do things. Keep it simple. Everything should be as simple as humanly possible. It should be about moving streams of text around uh, because that's that's something that you can go do with uh, with you know more or less anything I'm gonna move this back over here um, so okay so it looks like our boot up has finished I can now log in as Nick test a super secure password uh, and boom there you've got your uh, freebsd desktop up and running good to go in uh, in next to no time so you know i think it's um i think it makes it really easy for people to use it and it gives you the same kind of choice that you might be familiar with if you're coming from from linux 
And my hope is is that people who are you know passionate about Linux uh, are passionate about you know open source in general um, will try BSD more. Um, and maybe if you're uh, the kind of person who has a server that you set up, um, well, for your secondary system, you set up a, a free BSD system and play around with it. And I think after a little while, it may really grow on you because there's a lot of really nice things. There's a lot of you know elegance to the way that BSD is set up. The idea that the same people are responsible for the entire OS, the entire core OS, um, you know, all the things that you would need to run a server uh, or to run a basic system, um, that's all developed, managed, um, has the same coding standards all across the board. Uh, they're done as a release. So all of these things are validated together, uh, ensuring that they all work really successfully. So that's a really, a really neat thing. And, um, you know, there's just so many, so many really great benefits to it, especially if you're somebody who comes from a Linux background and you kind of get it, right? You, you get the idea of the, the philosophy being the driving force behind the, the computing. I would argue that BSD does a lot of that philosophy better. Um, it's not knocking Linux. It's just saying that in terms of the, the approach to things, um, and this isn't like a, a system D is bad rant or, or anything along those lines. I think there's benefits to, um, to doing it that way. But I think it's really useful to have BSD in our back pocket, right? Even if it's not your primary OS, because if we did get into a situation where, you know, uh, big companies really were kind of steering the direction of Linux in a particular direction, yeah, we can fork it and we can have small projects uh, and, you know, um, try to go back to earlier versions and, and fork the kernel off and things. But it's really difficult to do that without a really solid understanding of how, you know, things like the kernel internals or the system works. And why rebuild a team to do that from scratch when we already have an incredibly good team in the folks at, you know, the FreeBSD Foundation and the OpenBSD folks and NetBSD folks as well. Um, I, I personally tend to favor FreeBSD, but, you know, they're, they're all really good. And if you look at, you know, the FreeBSD development team, you know, you have people who are working on it still who can trace the way back to BSD4, uh, which is, you know, the original, like, Unix trademark, um, you know, version from, you know, University of Berkeley, California. Um, so, you know, that lineage is, is phenomenal, and they've been, you know, maintaining and, and working on this, this operating system the whole time. Um, it's also not a an operating system that's influenced by, by trends very much. So, you know, obviously it, it takes influence from what's going on in the, in the world, but, you know, it doesn't change things just to change them, right? So if something works and something is simple and something is, is, is good, let's leave it that way, right? Um, now you can also sort of develop other things and, and try stuff out, but unless there's like a really significant advantage from the new thing over the old thing, maintaining backwards compatibility and consistency is a really, really useful thing. So yeah, give it a try. This is um, the the 11.4 release. So right now there's basically three free BSC releases. It's a little bit confusing to people, uh, but there's the 11 series, uh, which is sort of the uh, the, the traditional, uh, to the sort of more slow moving one. Uh, there's uh, 12, <clears throat> which is, you know, a, a stable, uh, release and, and, you know, um, works great. Um, and then we have 13, which is in beta right now. And, um, the, you know, it's, a, it's, it's an interesting model for, for, for releasing basically your, um, your user space is sort of like a rolling release type, um, type system, uh, where they have sort of snapshotting, right? So they, they sort of snapshot in, in three month intervals and at the end of a release cycle, you get like a, I think it's a, uh, I think it's a, a three-year or five-year support cycle. But the, the great thing about BSD is that, you know, the differences between 11 and 12 are very minimal um, in terms of things that could potentially break, right? So, you know, if I go ahead and, you know, compile some software on my 
you know, 11x system, it's almost certainly going to compile on my 12.x system. So um, that's a very, very cool thing. So anyway, let me go ahead and eject the CD here. Go to storage. Eject this guy. And then we'll reboot. And then when this guy comes up, it's going to be very similar, but it's going to be a little bit different. Obviously, I picked a different um, desktop environment. I forget which one I picked. I think it's LXQT. Um, but the other thing that I, I did is in the 11 uh, series, it uses the Slim uh, Desktop Manager, Slim, did, like basically login manager, display manager that does the, the login. And Slim is, you know, okay. Um, it's not terrible. It certainly looks nice, especially with the FreeBSD theme on it. Um, but it doesn't have a ton of options, and it's a little bit clunky in terms of the way that it sets up. So uh, there's a uh, there's a package for SDDM, uh, which is the um, display manager that KDE uh, uses. You know, obviously, it can be used for other things as well because that's what I'm doing. Um, but it's a uh, it's it's really nice, and then it basically just works right out of the box. And there's there's very little tweaking that you need to go do with it. Um, you also have a couple more options in terms of the the way that it's presented when you log in. You can pick which session you're going to be using, so that way if you go install multiple desktops, it's a little bit better than that for that. Whereas Slim, you can do it, but you're going to cycle through them by hitting like the F1 key, which is it's a little clunky, honestly. So <clears throat> I think this guy freaked out because the CD wasn't there either. So we'll turn him back on. And um, yeah, so that's going to be very similar. Um, you know, whether you like um, the uh, Slim environment or the, the SDDM, either way, they're going to log in. <laughs> they both work. So um, I don't know. Maybe if, if people are interested, I could go set it up so you could go pick the, uh, the Display Manager on 12 if you prefer Slim. Uh, but I just wanted something that was like simple. Don't present people with a ton of options. Uh, just kind of give it the basic stuff that they would need to get things up and running. And, you know, once it's once it's up and they're good to go, um, at that point they can have a working environment where they can then, you know, get to the FreeBSD handbook. And they can, you know, uh, figure out all the, the tweaking stuff that they want to go do and, and, you know, see how to go install packages and kind of do all the stuff that one... Uh, would expect to do. So, yeah, it looks like we're up with uh, the system. I'll log in as test. I'll log in with my extremely secure password of test. Don't worry, these will be these will be long gone by the time I upload the video. Um, so, with uh, LXQT, you get to pick the window manager. I'm going to go just use OpenBox. So, you kind of get OpenBox installed for free as well. And then you get this nice... Uh, really clean, elegant looking uh, desktop environment, which I gotta say, I, I think is pretty neat. So that's your little, um, I don't know, um, time saver maybe, um, or evangelism tool. I also thought that the, the kind of the way to be able to just go ahead and pull it down with fetch and install like that is, is kind of nice. Um, it's a really easy way to you know, <laughs> point somebody in forums. It's like here, take this URL, type it in, pipe in an SH uh, and it'll, you know, install the rest of your system. Um, again, I'd love to get feedback on the the, the driver uh, installation stuff for the GPUs. So if you've got some, uh, some systems kicking around and you want to go try to uh, set it up, you know, and give me some feedback, uh, that'd be, that'd be great. Um, you can, I'll put a link to the, the script down in the, uh, in the, the window uh, below, but you can also get to it on my uh, GitHub page, and I just covered OBS, so let me go pull it back up. So if I go to Monitor 2, there we go. Um, so my GitHub is Nicholas Bernstein, N-I-C-H-O-L-A-S-B-E-R-N-S-T-E-I-N. So it's the uh, install FBSD desktop, um, and then basically you just go ahead and pull it down. So this is, you know, if you want to do the really long URL, <laughs> you can go grab it you know, from the, you know, the GitHub uh, raw source code and pipe that in SH. Um, but, you know, you're probably better off just downloading it. <clears throat> Obviously, you can just, you know, uh, pull it in with Git if you're on a, on a system. But at that point, you're already installing packages, so you probably aren't the, the candidate for this. So 
this is really easy. And uh, yeah. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video uh, and you subscribe, you might be able to see another one uh, from time to time if I'm not too lazy and actually start uploading things again. So <laughs> hopefully I'll be doing more of that. Uh, otherwise, uh, if you're in the U.S., I hope you had a, a nice Thanksgiving. And uh, if I don't post a video before uh, the, the new year, which hopefully I will, um, you know, happy holidays and all that kind of stuff and take care.